fun day. I feel really energized and really exhausted at the same time. It's been so much thinking and just connecting with so many amazing people, being able to engage in discussions, but then also being able to use creative methods to, to sit and play. Like, I love that. Oh, it's been absolutely fantastic. It always is with people's voice media events. I get so much out of it. I love the thought that they put into it. The fact that you get to play with things and just create. It's been marvellous. We've had that chance to all come together and have a shared passion for equity and social justice. And I think we all said it's such a boost because it can be tough and challenging work to do out there. I work in research and I work with racial minoritized groups and young people in particular. And today has just been really great for me to reflect, to learn more, particularly around non-verbal communication and ways of storytelling. Yeah, knowledge can be produced outside of uh, the ivory tower of academia and is to remember that, that people are doing this work. It's not just academics thinking and reflecting, but people doing the work are also reflecting. It's the realisation of all the different voices we've got here today to kind of explore different ways of working and also looking for solutions, reaffirming what I've already learned in my journey, but also listening to other people's ideas and differences so that we can sort of formulate a new idea as we move forward. It's just been a really good day, I think, to make connections, um, speak to lots of people with incredible lived experience um, and really hear really in-depth stuff about their experiences and their needs and how to kind of apply that to my work with storytelling. It's been a real joy to be here, to reconnect with people I haven't seen really since COVID, but also to be re-energised by all the creative minds in the room. It was absolutely brilliant. It's brought people together from across the country who have one thing in common, which is about coming together to look at community reporting and to look at tally, capturing stories that affect people on a daily basis. And they want to see changes. They want to make a difference. And they want to kind of come together and see how they can become a common voice, a united voice to make changes for the best in society. Coming from a kind of creative background, uh, I feel that like storytelling is always the heart of our jobs uh, but today i really feel it's it's like um together co-creating a kind of like stories behind the gates behind the walls boundaries so i really feel this energy in our group i think it's been really exciting hearing from people who are facing if you like some similar issues about being left out of community record, uh, reporting being excluded from having their voices heard and their stories told and looking at all the kind of barriers and strategies that we have in common and, and some of the things that are particular to different populations and to have the ability to sit down together and share them has been amazing two new things that i've done is I think I've done storyboards before, but also when we were getting creative with what the designs we did, I've never um, really thought about doing it. And when this suggested it, I was like, oh no, why are we doing this? And then I really, I really got into it and I enjoyed it because it's not just being the usual sitting with flip charts the whole time or listening to somebody. It's been absolutely fantastic being here today. I couldn't have wanted anything better. I really enjoyed today. For me, it's been about meeting people who think in different ways and want to make a good change in the world. I think it's been a great event today. I think as someone with lived experience of neurodiversity to actually have a chance to explore that and how that might instruct how storytelling um, and um, community reporting is done is great. And it's been great to listen to the other groups talking about what they were doing. And it's just been a really uplifting event today. The greatest thing for me today has been that I've been in a room full of people that really understand what it's like to be able to communicate without um, using my voice and have understood the difficulties and the challenges. Everybody's got a voice and everybody 
is entitled to their voice to be heard, whether they can communicate in a way we understand or not. But we need to start listening. Making sure that I'm centering the individual in all of my kind of storytelling work. So it's really, there is no kind of one size fits all. It's all about that person and their needs and what's going to make them feel most comfortable and what's going to really bring their story to life for them. One that really sat with me was about heart connections with people, making heart connections and doing listening with our body. Um, so when it comes to communicating with and gathering stories, sharing stories from people who don't communicate in uh, ways of using spoken word or in ways that are necessarily recognised by others, um, that we do really good deep listening with our hearts and with our bodies. All the people that I want to keep connecting with and um, just hearing about all the different things that happens in so many different spaces that people are working or living and experiencing and just really trying to connect with everyone and keep keeping the conversation going. The nonverbal forms of storytelling. Um, I think it's very easy to assume and to not make room uh, for particularly those who don't speak um, either English or who actually can't communicate um, in spoken form. It's very easy to kind of, they're the hardest to reach of the harder to reach group. And I think that's my main takeaway from today is the rights-based approach to ensuring that their stories are told as well. So many inspiring stories, so many inspirational people and so many courageous people that are doing creative things. We've got so much more to do and that we need to individualise what we do with each person and look at making that um, and shout about our successes as well as um, as as well as it let people know that there's accessibility. All action and awareness is political and that we need to act together if we want change to happen. And that means including the people who at the moment are really left out. So there were some groups that weren't present that it would have been lovely to have had involved, one of them being people with very severe and profound disabilities who's a group that I work with. Um, I think we could be learning an awful lot from deaf people um, as well. When we were um, thinking about the future, and we thought future generations might have T-shirts that said, why did they need meetings and funding and sandwiches for something as obvious as anti-racism? There was a quote that was shared um, about uh, morality alone won't make the change happen. It's got to be met with action and not just theoretical, nice support. So not passively, it's got to be active. I think what I've learned is a personal thing. I'm here supporting somebody and how they thrive in this environment because it's right for them. So it's all about getting the right environment to enable people to thrive. Yeah, I found out um, about several um, sites and points of information where I can actually get help to um, support me um, with my communication needs, which I would never have known unless I came here because it's really difficult to find out that information. People can do stuff in different ways and it doesn't always have to be the way that we've always done events. It was really useful to have really practical examples of different ways that people can express themselves. It's not always through talking, verbal or writing and just broadening our sense of ways people can tell stories through movement and body and sound, music and art has been a really useful reminder to just broaden the ways people can participate. What Adele did today um, and how she brings in kind of in, an Indigenous African culture back into sort of normality and decentering whiteness, all of that. I've already made contact with her, so we're going to do something together. I don't know how that will look, but we are going to do something together because that's directly relevant to the work I'm doing. I think I'm going to get people to make things out of Lego and collaging, and we're going to throw it all together and get people to make and create in that way because I loved it. So some of the activities I might be able to use in workshops that I facilitate and just that thinking of how to make things more dynamic and more creative and more inclusive and also the kind of deeper thinking about what we want to do and where we want to go. So we were talking about on our table about anti-racism and thinking about how do we make sure that it isn't just an echo chamber and it isn't just conversations going in a loop, but how we make that more active and, um, and support we more people to kind of to come on that journey with us. Well, I work for Disability Rights UK. We are a national disabled people-led organisation. And what I will be taking away is a lot of the contacts I've made here today. And we've already talked a lot about how we can um, or 
increasingly embed co-production, anti-racist principles, all of those things into my work. So it's really the, it's really the contacts and just the ideas and the buzz that I've just got from today. I do a lot of training um, on community reporting, so I think encouraging people to kind of challenge their assumptions about um, the stories that they're hearing and the people that they're meeting and to not kind of put people in boxes. It's really important to let your mind do the wandering to be able to be more creative in what you're doing and not get stuck in the same old way of learning. I really understand that it's all about the curiosity. So you find your own curiosity and to also listen them in like in generously. It's just that whole centering ourselves into a forum where we're humans talking with each other. We're putting our hierarchy out of the equation. Just being aware um, of the importance of networking, the importance of making common cause uh, with other people who share the same values. It's very easy when we're at work to get kind of focused in on the research papers we're writing, the applications, the service delivery. Um, so actually raising our eyes above the parapet, if you like, and seeing where we can find allies and work together. The skills that I've gained, also the networks that I've gained with different people while I've been here, and also how I can apply in accessing the right people, the right time, at the right place to make a difference in my local community, in my local society. Having a son that's got special needs, I need to start at home with him, which I've already started, but I think I need to be more forceful and start listening more, start asking him questions about, do you really want to do this? Rather than, do you want to do this? Well, I have to say I've done community reporting before, but also taking it away and finding out that people don't just always want or need to do it in, in a certain way. Ask people what they want rather than what you think is best. Carry on um, working towards giving um, people with disabilities and long-term um, health conditions a voice and to get more involved in community reporting. I think I'm coming away with more questions than ideas, which is great. And I'll take those questions into my work and into my interactions with other people. And I hope that that will help to make me show up better as a community reporter and in spaces where I'm with people who have difficulty accessing regular spaces. Wow, Hackathon 2024 PVM. What a fantastic experience. What a brilliant day. Thank you all for coming, for your full-on participation, but most of all, for being part of the PVM family.